All right, just stop right there. I don't want to hear anyone talking about how J. Cole apologizing is respectful and humble and how he's doing the right thing. No, 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 no. I don't want to hear it. Stop. And I'm going to tell you why that's all bullshit. Now, I know a lot of people associate rap beef with violence, but nobody thought Kendrick and Cole were going to start sliding on each other's blocks. Nobody thought they were going to shoot the fade. Nobody thought that any real violence or danger was going to occur from this situation versus maybe some other beefs that we've seen in the past. I think we all were on the same page that this was strictly a competitive hip hop beef. J. Cole was never known as a gangster, a scammer, a trapper, a gimmick, a tough guy, none of that. He has always been known as a lyricist, and not by us, by him. That's what he has told us over the past decade or so. He branded himself as the illest and most dominant rapper alive. He provided warnings to other rappers that nobody dare try to test him on the mic. He was the one that said he wouldn't even give Jesus a feature. The guy who said he's trying to revive a dying sport by which he means hip hop. And as hip hop transformed into a more melodic trap sound, he carried that spirit of the traditional 90s lyricist. So a lyricist, Kendrick Lamar, finally tested him, called him to the stage and said, let's see what you're made of. And he responds, seven minute drill, kind of pieces of his whole album, which was cool. But then he apologizes for that response within 48 hours. I pray that my really didn't feel no way. And if he did, my got my chin out. Take your best shot. I'm gonna take that on the chin, boy. Do what you do. After a decade of warning rappers, daring them to test you, the moment you finally get your chance and you fold. J Fold, that's your new name. Now, first of all, dissing Kendrick with a whole album after he dropped just one verse on a featured track was already overkill. And I know technically Seven Minute Drill is the only diss, but let's be honest. I mean, Might Delete Later is basically an entire diss. I mean, sure, a lot of those songs were obviously pre-recorded, pre-written, they're older, but bro definitely reshaped them a little bit to make it more current. It's kind of like what Drake did with Scorpion. Pusha T, Kanye, we're at his neck. Two, three weeks later, Scorpion drops and literally half the songs are about them. <laughs> he got bullied into being a good father. But we all respected it. J. Cole responded quick. It was cool. I honestly liked the energy of my delete later. I thought that the off season saw much better rapping and obviously better song structure because it wasn't in response to somebody. But hey, under the current landscape of rap, Might Delete Later still went hard. But we can all agree that the claims that J. Cole made in 7 Minute Drill were absolutely insane. Cole calling Kendrick's music trash and trying to claim Kendrick fell off when he, I'm pretty sure he just had his most successful tour of all time. It was just insane. It was insane. And when you really look at it, that was the only premise of his entire diss was that Kendrick was falling off and that his music is trash and that he's only talking about Cole because Cole is number one right now and Kendrick wants attention? That's pretty much it. That's the whole seven minute drill. And then a bunch of filler bars about how he's gonna, you know, slide on the block and that he's actually clutching the pole himself. He also said in the diss that people have been wanting him to respond and if he responds that would be like him swatting at a fly. But he was literally responding in the track so like wh what? Look the diss was weak. It was weak. It kind of sucked. But I mean ultimately it was a diss. It was a response and it was entertaining for the fans. Then he hit the stage and took back everything he said. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I moved in a way that was, that I feel spiritually feel bad on me. Like, like I try to like jab my back and I try to keep it friendly. But at the end of the day, when I listen to it and when it comes out and I see the talk, that shit don't sit right with my spirit. That shit make me feel, that shit disrupts my Peace. But why? Why did J. Cole apologize? Well, first of all, he wasn't the only person to apologize to Kendrick Lamar. Macklemore, J. Electronica, Lupe Fiasco. Apparently, Kendrick just strikes fear into other rappers, so much so that they feel they need to express their deepest condolences. <laughs> like, what does he know? What does Kendrick know that we don't? It seems pretty clear to me that Cole apologized because even he knew that he had no chance against Kendrick. Like, he claims that his spirit was hurt, or maybe <laughs> he felt that the rapture was coming with the solar eclipse <laughs> and he needed to get right with God <laughs> before, you know, the second coming of Jesus Christ <laughs> happens. But seriously, like, even 
despite the numerous shots that he took at Kendrick and threw at Kendrick over a whole album, he still didn't top Kendrick's one line of saying, that's a K with all these nines. He gon' see Pet Cemetery." Cole did not have a better bar than that one. So he apologized to mitigate the damage. I think that he just tried to get out in front of it and stop the beef before it went on for months and months or potentially years. Imagine how stressful it would be for 40 year old J. Cole waiting around every day for a much better better rapper to just diss him so that he can get in the studio and respond with a weaker diss only for the internet to basically tell him to give up because it's never gonna happen. He probably was feeling very confident in himself. I mean, he made an entire album, listened to it back, mixed it, mastered it, showed it to people, right? He was feeling confident and then maybe after he dropped it, he saw the world's response and saw that they weren't really taking his side like he thought they would and he decided to stop the bleeding before he bled out. Or maybe he really did have an epiphany and after he released it, he thought, Eh, this isn't worth it because I'm gonna take the high road. No, I, I, I'm not being objective here. There's no way. There's no way. He he saw the way everybody responded. I was like, fuck, I fucked up. I'm just gonna get in front of this. <laughs> I'll just nip it in the bud. Kendrick, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to diss you. Please don't diss me back because I still want a career. <laughs> Ironically, Kendrick's diss wasn't even nearly as hard as he could have went. Like Cole overreacted to a few bait lines. <laughs> like the beef started because J. Cole said that Kendrick Lamar is a great rapper and that and that then Drake is a great rapper and we're all great rappers together, right? Like that's the origin of the beef. I know it's deeper than that, but like, let's be honest, that's what started it or that's what escalated it to this point. So Kendrick said, you're not even in the conversation with me. I'm a better rapper. Let's see what you got. You know, just throw out a little bait. Let's see what you do. Then Cole dissed him and proved that he shouldn't be in the conversation because he apologized just two days later about his terrible diss record. <laughs> like it just confirms that you're not big three. And listen, if you're a J. Cole fan and you're mad at me, dude, I would have given Cole big three status. Personally, I would have, but now you got tested and you folded. Now, some one of you might say, oh, you better keep that same energy for Drake. Bro, Drake is not a rapper rapper, and we all know this. And Kendrick knew that Drake wouldn't diss him back. Drake jumps on a podcast. He jumps on stage and talks about, man, I don't even need to respond. Like Drake sings love songs. Let's be honest. Nobody was expecting a diss response, especially after Pusha T. You are hiding a child. Let that boy come home. I mean, Kendrick couldn't do Drake any dirtier than and Pusha did. So basically all J. Cole fans have left is to cope <laughs> by talking about him being humble and him being the bigger person and taking the high road. And I'm not there with you. I mean, y'all know normally I'm objective and I try to see it from both sides. And I do. I do see it from J. Cole's perspective. But bro, you brought this on yourself. You dissed him. You're the one who put this out. If you didn't diss him, sure, you'd have to live with the whole Internet saying, oh, you're scared blah 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 but dog after a decade of warning rappers and claiming you're the illest lyricist and you fold like this is a competitive rap beef nobody expected violence so i don't want to hear that oh it, it could have got out of hand it could have got violent like bro we knew that wasn't gonna happen. Like imagine if during the Conor McGregor versus Khabib fight, Conor just quit midway through the first round and was like, "Never mind." All that stuff I said about your religion and your family and your father and all of those terrible things that I said and did and the whole spectacle that I made about all of this buildup, I'm just gonna quit midway through the first round. Let's just go our separate ways. Imagine that. That's not what happened. They went to war and Conor lost. Khabib said he would humble him and he did. So the question is, what happens next? Biggie couldn't beat Tupac's hit him up. As big as Jay-Z gets as a music industry mogul and iconic rapper, we all know that he couldn't outdo Ether. MGK got eviscerated and embarrassed by Eminem. Now he was punching above his weight there, but it still caused him basically to switch genres. Remy Ma exposed Nicki so bad and then she started crashing out afterwards. So from here, J. Cole will either fade out of the spotlight and be remembered as the guy who full to Kendrick Lamar. He might try to diss Kendrick again after realizing folding was the wrong decision only for people to not take him seriously and just just kind of be like, yo, you, you look desperate right now, like you had your chance. Or he will start doing podcasts to try to save his reputation by way of all the fans that are like, oh, he's humble. He's taking the high road. All right, bro. So yeah, that's kind of what I think about it. Let me know what you think in the comments below and uh, drink water.